Hey guys, WaifuGate here. Uh, today we'll be talking about the Sultai ramp list that I've been running in the early access event. Thus far it's been uh, the most fun to play and it just feels like it carries a lot of impact throughout all stages of the game. Uh, so I've, I've just been really enjoying the list. So we'll be going over like, you know, how the deck works, uh, sideboard options, and what I might think are good and bad matchups and like how it'll kind of impact the meta potentially if lists like this not particularly like mine per se but um just sultai ramp in general how it might have an impact on the meta um just on a speculative level so uh first things first what does the deck do uh unlike most sultai ramp lists right now uh we're running gilded goose and there's a very good reason for that uh we've got the c dasher octopus that can mutate on top of this making it a um a 2-2 flyer which can just hit and draw cards it's a little weak to like bone crusher and stuff but we've got a lot of recursion anyway basically you just want to get a card or two off of this before bone crusher hits or whatever else happens to happen you know um you also ramp with growth spiral uro um and then you've got a lot of recursion with mythos of brokos um and then you have the good classic nissa plus hydroid crisis we also run a lot of one ofs here and there like we've got one Rem Grazer, Rem Gem Razor, uh, which is Reach, Trample, Mutilate, uh, stuff like this. We also have some gameplay as well. You probably saw the clip at the beginning. We'll go into the actual gameplay too. I'll try to anal uh, like throw my analysis for those games in. Um, the sound will be muted in the actual clip because of music and whatnot, but I'll talk over it anyway. Anyway, so um, yeah, it's pretty much the deck. Uh, dirge bat gives you a lot of good value a lot of answers you can continue to mutate this guy with c dashers you can uh, mutate your brazen borrower with dirge bat like there's all kinds of different combinations here where you end up with one really juiced up mutated creature you can kind of split it a little bit so you don't lose to like single target removal i think the thing that this deck will struggle with the most will probably be elspeth conquers death because it exiles all of the creatures on the mutate stack. One way to avoid that is to have your Nissa land be on top, um, because then it's a non-land, so it's kind of hard to interact with. Sometimes some cards will struggle to, you know, destroy target non-land permanent. Eh, good luck, because my thing's a land. My mutated creature is a land still. Um, and it will also be a CMC of zero, which is, you know, can still get Tyrant scorned, but at least not all of your creatures will be exiled, so maybe you can get Mythos back. So that's one way to play around ECD. Probably plenty of others, probably some sideboard options we can consider. Um, but general plan is to, you know, get an early Seed Asher with Gilded Goose who can also ramp you. And it's like all of these cards do more than one thing in the list. Like Brazen Borrower can bounce something. Uh, also come down as a flash creature so you can put an octopus on top of it or a dirge bat or something can come down you can put a sea octopus on top of that there's just so much recursion with this list it's just insane and you can always use tamio to recur the mythos um so like minus three on the mythos and you can just keep going with that and you can use the mythos to get tamio back as long as she doesn't get ecd'd so um and then this guy you can grab this with mythos it's a toolbox deck you just grab what you need either from the deck uh, or from your graveyard. So that pretty much covers that part of it. Uh, sideboard, I have this as pretty loose right now. The Ashiox and the Cries are for Phoenixes primarily, but Cries also good against Mono Red, Aggro. Same thing with Heartless Act. This is also good against Flash. This is good against Flash. You gotta counter that 2-2 two -two that makes it so we can't counter Flash creatures. Um, and then this is just generalized removal. There are probably better slots for this. I'm not sold on this being the 15. Um, and the main deck has a lot of wiggle room as well. Like you could very easily run a parcel. You'll see that in the clip, like the video coming up. Uh, the elemental here. Um, um, it's the new dude. So this guy, Parcel Beast. Um, I just couldn't spell it correctly for some reason. You'll see him in the clip. We ended up clipping him because we ended up not using Grazer. Um, so the decks changed a lot just from the early access, and I'm pretty sure the 75 will change again. Um, Risen Reef just seems a little bit too slow for a three mana card, like uh, the, the sad as that is to like here. It's just like what we have right now is just really cheap creatures that we can mutate. Um, and the deck just flows really well, so you guys will see that soon. 
um, but you've got Parcel Beast to consider. Um, we had Grazer in the deck for a while as another one drop with this guy. Um, you could run more Gem Razor's main board. You could run uh, Vicious Hydra um, would be a decent option because you can mutate him as well. And he gives you interaction with the board. So this could be a very good option. There's so many things to consider that the 75 is definitely going to be pretty loose for a little bit. But this is what I got so far. Um, probably budget options as well. Like if you have more arrows, you can run those over, you know, maybe some of the new rares and mythics you might not have from the set, etc. Uh, and we are running the lands here, the Zagoth, so that's something to consider. Uh, the link for the desk deck will be in the description below as well, so uh, no worries about that. So let's, let's get into the gameplay. All right, so here we go. Here's the gameplay. So we've got pretty much uh, the optimal hand here. We've got Goose into Sea Dasher. That's pretty much what you want to see. That's perfect. Um, other good hands are anything with like Brazen Borrower, uh, Sea Octopus, uh, Brazen Borrower Bat. Um, there are lots of good combinations, but this is pretty much the bread and butter is the Goose. Um, so basically here, what we do is I the only way I can cast the Octopus to flash it in is by tapping the Goose right now. I don't have a blue untapped source. Um, I still kept my land... Uh, my hand and my um without the blue mana anyway so here like i'm kind of talking to chat seeing the different uh variations we could kind of go through with emotions it's a thing that i do a lot on uh, twitch um so i almost cast it and then i decide not to because i know that it'll tap my goose and that just doesn't seem very great so instead i wait for them to attack me because then i have a chance to um you know flash in the octopus after declaring blocks because then i can tap it and it's still blocking and that's pretty much what we do here um and, you know the opponent doesn't really um do too too much in regards to developing their board especially after this because knight is the only thing that really checks us hard and i mean it's not incorrect really for them to swing in because it's like if they don't swing in how do they get there as the aggro deck like are they going to play around that play like all day and I mean, I guess they could have waited to swing, but I mean, that would be like them knowing exactly what was in my hand and we're dealing with a lot of new cards. So here we draw from the effect from the Sea Octopus. Um, and then we have a few different choices here to kind of make, to kind of go through. So I end up just playing a tap land and saying go. And they play another scry land. So maybe this is why they didn't perform too, too well in this, in this, um, in this matchup because they had... Uh, I think they missed a land drop because I'm pretty sure they went first. Um, and so now I don't have to shock in a land or anything here. So I just go like this over and I swing to see if I can get like a triome or something, you know, like a, a tap land to play instead of a, uh, instead of like, you know, the swamp that I ended up having to play here. I'm pretty sure here they end up removing the gem razor. Um, with like Murderous Rider or something. And then, so we lose all of the value that we produce. Like, you know, we lost it all. But in reality, um, we actually gained quite a bit from doing what we did. We pushed a lot of damage through. They're down to 12 life now, um, which is pretty significant for this, this type in the match. And they didn't develop their field. They simply answered what I was doing. So here we're pretty open just to play Nissa, And then hold up Growth Spiral, develop Goose... Um, you know, maybe C dash around the land, which I think is the final end game. Um, just because it's like kind of free. So here we get to untap the breeding pool. Pretty sure that's what we do. Um, and we know that our opponent's probably just going to play like murderous rider or do something else. If they happen to have a second murderous rider in hand again, we have to blow through that eventually anyway, whether that's a big crassus dying or whatever, like we've just got to push through. But you can see how this deck is already recovering from uh, the Murderous Rider. And now how they can, can they answer Nyssa? You know what I mean? Like, if they have another Murderous Rider, are they going to use it on this Octo land that's just slapping them in the face? Um, so this is a glitch in Arena right now. The reason why I don't make it into a 2-2 is because it doesn't retain its base of a 2-2. Like, it doesn't get the extra counters from being a creature. Like, the 1-1 the, the counters that are on it 
for some reason the game right now registers that as its power toughness so that's like a glitch in the game so i just make it into a um uh the land being the base that way in case they have something that's like destroy target non-land they can't hit my land with it is my is my reasoning there um, otherwise we would have a 5-5 that draws us a card each turn which would be way more significant but instead we have to play with a scuffed land and that's just um that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes um so you'll notice that mythos here can pretty much bring back anything that we want from the graveyard uh, any permanence so i play my tap land and untap it with nissa um just because that's efficient you know um it's just not terrible it let's just use our mana so I look at this thing and I don't really like it. So I'm like, how can I solve this? And it goes uh, along the lines of Mythos. And then we end up using the mana spent. So blue black. So we're able to throw something into the graveyard, which is a dirge bat. We get to search for this, which is just awesome. Um, and this is the kind of toolbox stuff that we get here. So I don't think they really have artifacts and enchantments. So I'm just taking the C Octo here for a cheap mutate on the bat, basically. So here we go and now we can mutate and we do this on the creature now we're not able to swing in here and it's fine i just go over anyway just because because i can so this should be a six six bat because it has three one one counters on it um so that's just a glitch um hopefully it's fixed before release uh hopefully a lot of other people have already tested that um maybe not a lot of people are running nissa plus um Plus mutate creatures, but I think it would be pretty common. You know, this is a pretty good card. So they play like a new card, right? Kappa Kipo, uh, Obnixilis. So some spice here. I think it's just because it's like odd or whatever, and they're able to run this card in the background there. So now we get to mutate again. We go over. So normally this would be a six six, but instead uh, we get to do this. So I just I end up blowing up the Planeswalker. That way I can just swing life and draw a card here, is my reasoning. Because if I'm swinging at the Planeswalker, I'm not drawing a card, which is just bad. Um, then I untap a, a land here, which is just going to be a forest. Honestly, I could have just untapped the normal forest, and it probably would have been better. So I don't like make my black sources vulnerable, but probably not a huge deal because of the swamps here. Um, so we just swing out before we play Goose. They chump it, go down to six. We get to draw a card, and we... Uh, they gain a little bit of life back and then i just get to play goose here now we don't get to make use of this mana yet i could crack the the thing for life but it's just not worth it i can't use the goose mana yet because he has summoning sickness or she has summoning sickness i'm not sure what type of goose it is um and here we go so i ira comes down and murderous rider so they develop these two things and we they gain some more life we just simply untap and then we kind of just go ham here this is i think what you guys saw at the beginning of the video so that's going to be like yep breeding pool into sea octopus onto the dirge bat and this is just insane value right like over under under because you know how it goes blow that up uh, we ended up move, removing Parcel Beast because it wasn't fast enough without Grazer. This is the game that sort of determined that. Like, it it, it was just a mutate effect, basically, that we got off of this. Um, and he just didn't seem to do a lot, um, for the most part. Like, you have to tap down the creature, and it's kind of awkward. Because if you go to do that, and then, like, you want to swing in, it's just it just doesn't mesh well. Um, so we bring them down to one here um we get to draw two cards off of this which is just insane you see now even if they answer my dude what happens you know who, like no one no one cares right it's just like we we get to draw three cards here um we have to discard like watery grave or something here maybe maybe the scry land or something or not the scry but the uh well there's the scry land with castle Vandress, but i think they just they're playing their big dude here and then that's pretty much the end of the game like so just really really solid you know so i'm planning on doing videos like this more often potentially uh once a week i'm taking mondays off to do a youtube video so if you guys are in for this content everything else um you know feel free to like and subscribe it really helps the uh, youtube channel if you guys have any questions 
always feel free to drop by my stream. I've got all the links down below, uh, including the link to this deck so you can export the list. So as soon as the uh, set goes live, you can try it out. Um, I'm not sure if all of these cards will be in the finalized list, but I know that Dirge Bat and the Sea Octopus are generally pretty safe crafts. Um, so I'm pretty excited about the set and I'm going to be playing this more tonight. Um, so I'm just going to keep working at the list and I hope you guys uh, are enjoying the content and thanks for chilling out and uh, watching the video.